grave, cradle to the grave. My wife suggestion that uh, we should sell up. See, you see, we own our own house, our own business. Things weren't too good. Pretty fair of business, she has good business, but too much credit. You couldn't get your money. Mm. You know that bird, don't you? And it was then we decided to sell up. And uh, put in for a boozer. Here, Tom. We don't need to go away to keep fit round here. Stay in the black country and get fit. They go to these seaside places, they start breathing this air, they come back, they have two pints of beer, they're upset, they go go to work the next morning. If they stop at home, they have the local chemical works and one mess and another car, they get it down them and by Christ, I'm as fit as... <laughs> On Monday when they go to work, they're as right as right. <laughs> Well, we're just friends, you see, and we meet here. <laughs> Pigeon flies have cut one another's throat, sort of a thing, but they're still their friends. Is that right, Bill? When your grand old grandfather, when he kept the cross? Friends and you make friends. I think you're the best people in the world, the people that use the public. Oh, you this is I should say myself, it's a, it's a tradition with the father and son we brought up together. We know we know one another like that from A to Z. It's a friendship way, it's a way it's a way, it's a way we've been brought up. We we just live that way. We we mean We've always been brought up that way. We have to make our own comfort. Well, if not, we finish off fighting. In uh, the West Midlands here, uh, I mean, what they commonly call a black country there, but it's all a manual labour sort of a thing. They're, they're, there's hard-working chaps. It's, all, it's always been hard work around this part of the country. Very, very few easy jobs. I mean, you've got your collieries, you've got your brickworks, you've got, you've got your ironworks, and all, and all the building trade, it was all hard work, manual labour. Well, that, that was their enjoyment. If they could get in the booth of a weekend, congregate together, have a game at this, have a game at that, pigeon flying, anything, cockfight, you know, anything, bull, anything, that's what they enjoy, really. Yes, rough and tough, they could have a fight. And they'd be friends, shake hands, and, and, and have drinks with each other. And I'm here with them, 8 o'clock at night, biggest part of the time. So they're going to be looked after. They're like, like little children. Especially the babies, these youngsters. They're very timid. Round here, it's an odd bit of pigeon flyers. I mean, the old tick just round here. One, two, three, the three pens up here. There's one just over here. And there's Lewis Hill just over there, over the back here. There's two or three down below. And they've all got them. And we have a bit of a game on a Saturday when they were coming. One goes round one pen, what time you in? One goes round another, what time you in? And, and they all turn in bloody lies when you're in it up, more or less. It's the best sport. It should have been the best sport in the world for a working chap. Anyway, it's a deal of it. We'll admit that. But uh, it's better than being in there. It's been nagged all the while by a wife, I should say myself, if you understand what I mean. I mean the same as some of these fishermen. They only gone fishing to get out the women, more or less. And uh, I should say if there's any liar bigger than a pigeon flyer, it's the fishermen. Yeah, I'd rather have my old customers, the old gamblers, the pigeon flyers. Three folk new wins, three folk new cross doubles and things like that. And a little argument, or shall we say a debate, instead of argument, a debate. Sing song, 
Came with cards, came with dominoes, put about a ton of the shilling and get stuck in anything like that. Empty your beer, have a pint. That's, a, that's the sort of lads as I like. Well, you've got to enjoy it. You've got to make it own way. Do any good, you'll be a sportsman and get about. Same as in the army. No good in the army, if you won't be a sportsman. You know, be a fighter as well. Oh. <laughs> you've got to take a to take care of yourself. How old are you? Seventy-four. Mm. In them days, I'd open at six o'clock in the morning till eleven o'clock at night, all day. I don't mind that. He's gone in, he's gone in at six o'clock in the morning. You ain't come out till eleven o'clock at night. Because in them days, a couple, a couple of bob in your pocket, you haven't, you haven't landed for the day's drinking. <laughs> they'd, they'd fight and they'd go out drinking with one another. Fifty, sixty years ago. In those days, it would always be a great big fire, a bright and cheery place with the Friday nights, Saturday nights and Sunday evening for certain in all the pubs there would be bread and cheese or, and pickles and other things on the table for any of the customers you know and probably cold meat they, they, they would give that away of course naturally that used to bring the, the people into the pubs they got away from home because the conditions were bad they'd been hard at work most of them had got big families and I think they got into the pub to forget all the troubles it was escaping from the home, more or less. They put the big new ones up. It's, it's not the same atmosphere as in these old ones. I believe this is a meeting place. They must, do, they must do. They've got to disappear. Indeed. This has got to disappear. It's got to disappear. See, what ground they own now, they hold the ground at the back, make it for the people, the young folks to come in 20 years' time and walk in, and they're walking in the House of Parliament. That's what they've got to do. It isn't old, it isn't old man's world, it's, it's young people's world. But I'd you don't see the way the time is coming today. Oh. Every lad's 16, he's got his motor car. When we were 16, we couldn't own a bike, couldn't own a wheel off a bike. Ask you, no, ask you no, to turn. No, no couldn't own nothing. But uh, the new pubs and the old pubs, in the new pubs, to my mind, there isn't the same atmosphere as there is in an old pub. No. To my mind, there is. I've old people and forgot. Old people and it, forgot it, it, remi it. it reminds me of a story <coughs> that... Uh, <laughs> An old pub had been converted with all its chromium painted, you know, yes. and everything shining. And he asked, the tenant asked one of the old uh, members, he says, uh, are you like it? Oh, he says, he's smashing pub, he says, but I miss the old spit tunes, he says, the publican turns out. The publican turns out, he says, yes, I missed them when they were there. <laughs> This is his job I've ever had. I'll be candid about it. I've always worked hard. Always. I've done 12 hours a day in the iron mill. It depends on the A's, what we call on the A's, that, that's in the lie. I've done 12 hours a shift there for 18 shillings per week. I left that and I went striking on hooks, what they call trace chain hooks. I left that and I went into the colliery. From the colliery, I went away as a professional footballer, which I'll say I failed at. Charge on. <laughs> then, when I failed, I had to come back to hard work again. Is that right, Mr. Bill? Now, you see, you get to all these temperamental things happening in life. We do happen to everybody else. Such as now, I lost my wife. Suddenly, I didn't want to, but I took her. And she was a she was a little woman. But they took her. Just to build his